Revelation chapter 20, and then let's start off at verse, we left off at verse 9, verse 9. Now remember at Revelation chapter 20 and uh, verse 9, the city of Jerusalem itself is being encamped, the Bible says, by all these nations around the world. Now remember, all these nations around the world, the, the reason why we're able to get that much of a huge number who will oppose God's chosen people, the Jews, and then his saints and the Christian church, is the only reason why they're able to do it is because of the generations that pass by. So remember, if you have a thousand years and you bring forth children, I mean, give it a thousand years, you're going to have a lot of people. Another reason for the numbers is because, remember, there's going to be unbelievers during the tribulation who do not comply to the Antichrist government. They go rogue, they, they do their own thing. But they're not saved believers themselves. And that was good preaching for people who are into conspiracies, actually. Just because you're a conspiracy theorist doesn't mean that you're the good guy already. That's right. Yeah, you can believe all these conspiracies be against the New World Order agenda, but you can still be on the devil's side. So we've studied that one. So that was intensely interesting. So these are the two factors on why there's a huge number of people that can be opposed against God. That's where we get the numbers from. Mm -hmm. All right, so then all these people round about They've encamped, the Bible says, these people. They've encamped the saints. And then what they try to do is that they try to oppose them, try to attack God. And then the Lord, it, it was real easy for him. If you keep reading the verse, it says, fire came down out of heaven and consumed them. It devoured them. So it only took one fire from God to burn, to burn up the opposition that was sent out from the devil and from these people. And then they got wiped out. Now, look at that passage as we read it. And then I'll explain. And they went up on the breadth of the earth. So they went up on the width, the face of the earth. All these people who are opposed against the Jews. And compassed the camp of the saints. So they surrounded the location of where the saints are at, that's Jerusalem, Israel, we study that. And the beloved city, that's Jerusalem, we study that. And fire came down from God out of heaven. So fire comes down out of heaven, and that's from God. And devoured them. It consumed them. It devoured them. Now look at 2 Peter chapter 3, please. 2 Peter chapter 3. So what's going to happen is that the Lord, when he sends down this fire from heaven... It's not just consuming uh, an amount of people here that are opposed against God. Because remember, the number is like the sand of the sea. We study that, right? So if that's the case, this is going to be practically worldwide. So what the Lord's going to do is that he's actually going to set the whole world on fire. That's important to understand. So then the whole world over here, he sets it on fire. So this is just an artistic rendition, okay? I'm just doing this for artistic rendition. I don't want people to get upset at me, you know, saying the world is flat, pastor, you know, stuff like that. I'm not going to get into that kind of stuff, all right? This is just artist rendition. You know, you don't have to freak out. So then the Lord, he sets the whole world on fire and then it burns to the ground, you've got to understand. So after the 1,000 year millennium, so this is a timeline, okay? The timeline is 1,000 year millennium here. The next on the timeline is where God sets the whole world on fire. So then it's the heaven and the earth passing away. So then this heaven, this earth that we're living in, we understand this. It's, it's all going to burn up. And then the next one we're going to see what will happen, which is the great white throne judgment. Okay? All right. So let's do this. 
Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 3. Notice what God does with all of creation, all the universe, and all the earth. The Bible says at verse 10, 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall what? Pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So notice uh, verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. See that? So all the heavens and the earth is burned up and gone. It's burned up and gone. Now, look back at Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20. So we see here that the entire universe itself is set on fire. Now, for some people who don't know, I talked to this last time, a long, long time ago. A lot of you may have not been here when I taught this lesson. But the whole universe is actually a pyramid-shaped form. It is a pyramid-shaped form. Some of you who are curious, you can look at uh, my video. It's called The Pyramid Shape of the Universe. I have a video on that on YouTube. But I'm not going to get into that one. All right? I'm just going to, you're just going to have to take in what it is for now. So then all of the universe and the world is set on fire and it's gone. And how we know that, that this is that timeline is, look at Revelation chapter 20. And let's keep reading. The next verse. Verse 10 the devil goes to the lake of fire with the beast and false prophet, right? Amen. Now, verse 11, I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the what? Earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. So look at this. The earth and the heaven is gone. Now, use your head. What, what other timeline can you think of the earth and heaven being gone? What other timeline? Second Peter 3, we read that. It told you. The earth and the heaven is gone by fire. So then wouldn't you say that 2 Peter chapter 3, that this is the timeline that Revelation 20 is talking about, the earth and heaven being gone? Not only that, Revelation 20 told you fire came down out of heaven at verse 9 and burned. See? That matches with 2 Peter 3 saying the heaven and earth is gone and being burned. So that's why they match up there. Not only that, what's interesting is if you keep reading 2 Peter 3, it says a new heaven and a new earth after its birth. And then if you look at Revelation 21, once the heaven and earth is gone, at the first verses of Revelation 21, it says there's a new heaven and new earth. So there is no doubt that 2 Peter chapter 3, that timeline would fit over here. After the millennium, it's burned up. This is the next timeline. And then the next timeline is where that new heaven, new earth comes out. But we're going to see the great white throne judgment soon. All right? So let's keep going. Let's go at verse 10 now. Verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Amen. So Satan, yeah. the one who deceived the entire world to go up against the nation of Israel... After the millennium, he's finally cast into the lake of fire. Remember, he was in the bottomless pit. Now he's in the lake of fire. And that would be a day. Yeah. That would be a day where we're going to uh, praise the Lord and shout where he's going to burn for all eternity. Yeah. And brimstone. So brimstone can uh, be, it refers to sulfur. Interestingly, it would mention as stones of fire. And I kind of gave an interesting teaching on that. Or it could refer to a tank or something, maybe. But anyway, if we go back, if we continue on, this lake of fire is where the beast, verse 10, where the beast and the false prophet are. Remember, at Revelation 19, after the battle of Armageddon, the false prophet and the beast lost. And when they lost, they were in the lake of fire before the devil. The devil went into the bottomless pit. Remember that? So now the devil is joining the beast and the false prophet. 
Now the lake of fire, you're going to hear this heretical teaching, and they teach that the lake of fire is considered to be a temporary place. It's, uh, it's referring to annihilation, they'll say. Now, is the lake of fire, is that um, eternal? Is it annihilation? Or is it, again, eternal? It's eternal, right? Jehovah Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists, they, infinite, they infamously teach that the lake of fire is actually a place where you just go over there and you get annihilated. You don't burn forever. But that is completely false because look what the lake of fire is at the last part of verse 10. And shall be tormented day and night, how long? Forever and ever. So this is eternal. The lake of fire is eternal. It's not where you go in there and poof, you're gone. They're tormented day and night. See, every single day they're tormented and it lasts forever. Some people might say that the lake of fire it, it is eternal fire, but you're not burning there forever. So then the question is, then why would God even keep the fire going to begin with, right? For eternity? But then if you look at verse 10, it says, shall be what? Tormented day and night. Yeah. See, they are being tormented. They are burning forever and ever. All right. Now let's look at verse 11. And I saw a great white throne. All right, remember, this is the book of Revelation. In other words, what God reveals things to John. That means John, he's constantly going to see different revelations, different visions, different things he's going to see. That's why he keeps saying, and I saw, and I saw, and I saw. All right, so what does he see next? I saw a great white throne. All right, that's self-explanatory, right? And him that sat on it. So someone sitting on a great white throne. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. So this being's face who's sitting on the great white throne. His face alone is going to make the earth and the heaven run away from him. So that's God Almighty. That's God being judged. And there was found no place for them. So there's no place where you can find the earth and the heaven. It's zilch. It's gone. Because remember, God burned it up, right? So then now God burned it up. Now here comes his majesty on the great and terrible days. And that is the great white throne judgment. And in this great white throne judgment over here, he is going to judge all these billions and billions of souls. Why? To see if they are worthy enough to enter heaven or if they can gain a reward. Everyone has their own reward system. The lost people, their reward system is, depending how well their works are, then it depends on their level of damnation. And then uh, the believers or the saints who are worthy enough, then their reward, uh, they will get, by the quality of their works, they will be judged. Eh, I'm going to make this, this one a little different. There we go. Now, this great white throne judgment, let's see what the Bible has to say about this place. Uh, by the way, remember the Christians are not here. The Christians, they were already judged at the judgment seat of Christ. So the different saints that will be judged here, which I'll, I'll remind you, is uh, the ones who are not Christian saints. They're different saints from different time periods. I'll explain that later. Later, uh, Let's look at verse 12. <clears throat> and I saw the dead, small and great. So dead people, they're being brought up to this great white throne judgment. And it can be small people, it can be great people. It can be big people, little people, in reputation, in status, or locality they were in. Now, it says the dead. Why? Because if you remember verse 6, verse 6, there are two resurrections, remember? Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Remember that first resurrection took place over here, right? At the millennium? We discover that. So these are people that on such the second death hath no power. 
You see that at verse 6? So these are people in the tribulation who overcame the beast and the mark. They get resurrected or also raptured. And when they enter the millennium, they are not in danger of the second death. But there's another group of dead who will be resurrected and they're going to be judged. And that's the lost people. That's why at verse 12 is your second resurrection. Verse 6 says first resurrection, right? Verse 6. And those are for saved people, not lost people, right? So it shows over here there has to be a second resurrection. And there has to be a resurrection for lost people. Follows logically. Not only that, um, if you remember Daniel chapter 12, which we looked at last time, Daniel 12 told you there's a resurrection for the just and the what? Unjust. So see, there are two resurrections, one for lost people, one for saved people. All right, and uh, I'm not going to get into the first resurrection, but I taught you last Revelation study. The first resurrection has three phases, and then we covered that. One was uh, Jesus Christ at his resurrection with Old Testament saints. The second one is the Christian church, which is why we're raptured before the tribulation. And then the third one is referring to tribulation saints.